All right, guys, welcome to the Clack Shack. And tonight, guys, I got a little, uh, I got a little engineering I've been doing. Uh, I ordered some parts on Amazon because I wanted my air assist to be bigger, better, stronger, and faster. So I've been working on my air assist and redoing it. And I told a few of you on some of the videos that my intentions were to put my air assist on the shop air because I've got a, uh, a large twin cylinder air compressor that's outside that I use. And at a 10 PSI trickle, uh, it would be more than capable of running multiple machines on an air assist. And I'm getting kind of overcome with all the cabling and everything that goes along with the air, air assist compressors. And I'm needing an air assist to mount permanently on the portable clack shack. So I've been doing a little, uh, little engineering tonight and I'm gonna bring you along and show you the prototype. Now I haven't finalized this guys. Uh, I'm still working out the bugs before I go to cutting into any of my PVC air plumbing I've got in the shop, but I'm just gonna show you where we are right now. And I'm gonna do a little test burn just to see how it's working. I just got everything hooked up. I haven't ran the laser with it yet. So I'm gonna bring you along and uh, we'll see what's, uh, see what it's all about. So stick around for a minute. All right, guys. Uh, first thing I want to point out before we start is I got my new shirts in finally. And uh, these things are a lot cooler. Uh, since I'm not doing woodworking today and I'm not going to have saw chips going everywhere, I thought I'd wear one. But getting you to where I am right now, currently, this is my little Frankenstein setup that I've got going temporarily. Uh, right now, what I'm doing, and I'll go ahead and tell you this, when you buy this little kit right here, it comes with an oiler attached to the regulator. And I don't want any oil going into my laser. So what I have done is I took the bowl of the oiler off, uh, put me a little bit of rubbing alcohol in the bottom of it and cleaned it out. And I've put a little more rubbing alcohol in there. And I'm just letting it, letting it, push that air out through the uh, open air here and trying to get all those little oil particles out of the inside of that because I don't want that oil flying around inside there around my laser lens. Uh, so I'm using rubbing alcohol as just kind of a solvent to get that out of there uh, to make sure when I go together with this, I don't shoot oil into my laser. So I've been letting that run for a little while. I just kind of brought y'all in on the tail end of it to try to cleanse any oil residue that may still be in this oiler. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna disconnect my air, make sure I don't have any pressure in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this bowl back off and I'm gonna empty the, the rubbing alcohol that's in this bowl. I'm just gonna go ahead and empty it now that I've let it run for a little while. And there's an O-ring that'll fall out if you don't watch it. It didn't fall out that time. But that's just a little tiny amount of rubbing alcohol. So I'm gonna get that out of there. And I'm gonna clean this thing one more time with this clean rag here, just make sure there's no uh, little oil in there. Cause I don't know that it would hurt anything, but just having oil injected into the nozzle of my laser at high speeds just doesn't sound like a, uh, a good idea. So I've got that back clean now. Uh, there's still gonna be a little bit of that uh, rubbing alcohol in this bowl. So I'm gonna let that thing bleed a few more minutes just to, just to get confident that anything in there is out. And I've got a little, uh, I got a little valve here. And this valve, you can turn the air pressure down or you can turn it all the way up. But at full pressure from the regulator this way, I've got it adjusted to about 10 PSI. And everything I've read says, you know, 12 PSI and lower. Uh, but this will also give me the capability of regulating the flow on this. So that's, that is just barely any air at all. And then that's gonna be the full 10 PSI, which, which I really don't see me using. I don't, I, I may even go into the regulator and turn that down a little bit, but I wanna play with it at 10 PSI and uh, and then if I find the sweet spot for this machine, then uh, I, can, I can always go back and redo the, the settings on the regulator to get it to where I want it. Uh, but I'm gonna let that run for just a second, just to get any kind of any kind of rubbing alcohol or any remaining oil out of that. Uh, I did order a bunch of these 
fittings and the hose that is the exact match for what uh, X-Tool uses. This is actually the, uh, the hose that came with my X-Tool air assist. And you can see it snaps right in. And when I turn that on, it's, it is sealed and it is coming out inside my machine. All right, guys, I've been playing around with the uh, air assist a little bit with my new uh, hose air uh, connection. And I think I've got it figured out about where it needs to be. And if you've got any insight into this, guys, if you've ever had to go through setting this up, feel free to let me know in the comments what you found, what you preferred as far as pressures and stuff goes. But this is some of the cuts uh, with no air assist. And with no air assist, you can tell it doesn't cut as smoothly and sometimes it doesn't even cut completely through the material. So, but what I have landed on is I've got, let me look, make sure I'm telling you the truth here. I've got my regulator now set to probably, I mean, it is just barely over five uh, on, the, on the pressure, maybe, maybe eight. I think it's set to maybe like eight PSI. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this circle over here and put it up underneath that shape and make sure I turn my air on. I got used to this valve. And I'm gonna run that. And this is without the air assist, same settings, I'm gonna run it, about, run it again. And this is probably about eight PSI. It's, it's less than 10, but more than five. I couldn't find a uh, gauge that went any lower than what this one does. So it's kind of it's kind of finicky when it comes to setting the pressures and getting it like I want it. But I ordered this as a kit. It came with a regulator, the oiler, which we did away with any oil. And it came with the uh, connectors and everything so that was without the air assist and I run the exact same power setting and that's with the air assist I got one little snag right there but I'm running this that cut just ran at seven millimeters a second so that's kind of a that's kind of a, a fast pace for cutting so I'm gonna slow it down to six millimeters a second and we'll see if we can get a clean drop out of it but, uh, but yeah, you can see it obviously makes a difference. I don't have any scorching or anything around that hole. It's nice and clean. Uh, so it's, it's definitely working just as well as the air assist that I have been using, which is the X-Tool model. And like I said, I'm using shop air now. You may can hear my air compressor just kicked on. It should have no problem providing this little bit of air. I only plan on running this machine on shop air. I'm gonna run the other one on the uh, variable speed uh, Congro. Okay, without the door shut, I have triggered an alarm, guys, because it's letting the smoke come up instead of going into the uh, into the vacuum. But see, that's a clean drop on that one. Uh, no, no scorching. The uh, Let's see what the soot looks like. Very little, uh, very little soot. So I think that's my, I think that's my settings. Cause I mean, even, even with, uh, even with that cut, I don't have a lot of soot on the, the cut. So I think that's where I'm going to end up staying guys. Uh, but for now, the new, uh, no, newly engineered air assist works. And so I can move my X tool over to the portable clack shack. Before we go anywhere, guys, in case you didn't get a good look at it earlier, there's my little setup I got going for the moment. Now, I'm going to clean that up a lot once I make sure I finalize everything. All right, guys, just going to give you a little tour of what I got here. Uh, this is the, uh, the hose that I bought, and it comes with a lot of the little couplers, so you can put this stuff together. Uh, I've got these T's. So if I wanted to tee it off and run a couple of machines on my, my air hose, I could. It's the same little injected, you know, pull the release connector. Uh, I've got some of these. I'm going to mount these inside my machines or inside my enclosures. That way I can put a screw through here. And if I want to take my air assist out, I can unhook it that way 
and when I'm moving my machine out to clean it or whatnot, and uh, keep that from having to, you know, keep from having to unhook it and pull the wire through. Uh, it came with several of these little guys here that allow you to uh, connect other pieces of equipment, and I've got to get some uh, get some adapters or some some different hose to make some adapters. But I also got myself a little manifold. Uh, this is actually off of uh, from for making brew <laughs> or kegs. Uh, where you uh, charge them with CO2 during uh, brewing and stuff. But it works for, for air as well. Uh, I decided not to use that because right now I'm gonna just run the one machine on uh, this setup so that I can free up my X-Tool air assist. Uh, but you get this cool, little, uh, this cool little cutter here too. It came with the kit, so you just put the uh, hose in there and push that down and it cuts it cleanly. Uh, it took me a second to realize that I had a cutter. I had already broke out the box cutter and was doing a pretty good job of cutting it with it. But uh, so if you do if you do order this stuff, uh, there's that. I also have this little valve which I'm going to put on the portable enclosure. Uh, and reason being is my X Tool Air Assist does not have a variable output, so I'm going to use this guy and it's got two places where you can screw, hole, screw it into the machine. And the way that this works is if you tighten it, it lessens the airflow, and if you loosen it, it releases the airflow. And so this will also allow me, when I'm engraving using the 20 Watt Pro and the portable clack shack, it'll allow me to turn the air pressure down to where it will keep the gases away from the lens, but not be enough to uh, cause a problem with uh, with scorching or anything like that if I don't if I don't want it to scorch. So got that with the with the kit too. And I can drop links for all this stuff if you're interested guys. Like I said, my biggest thing that I had a problem with was Guinea. Come on, bud. Was the the one that I got from Comgro. It had a fairly short hose on it. So now I'm gonna be able to extend that hose and wire that thing up to where I can take it loose using one of these little elbow quick connectors here and not have to be constantly fishing wire in and out of my enclosure or hose. All right guys, fast forward just a little bit and I went ahead and mounted me a, a quick disconnect inside this enclosure out of that kit. So now when I get ready to take the machine out, I can just reach in here and undo the air assist hose and the machine comes out. I don't have to fish the line all the way back through or try to take it loose from the machine. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. Get this zoom back down a little bit here. So now, when I get ready to take the machine out or put the machine back in, this little lead of hose right here stays on the machine and I can just simply connect it into this little quick coupler, which I have screwed to the side wall of the, the enclosure. And I still have plenty of room for the machine to move back and forth. If I do put the legs on it and raise it up to do a taller engrave, I'll actually have a little extra hose here, but I've got plenty of room built into the enclosure that it should be able to ride over here. So I've got that one plumbed up and show you what I did to the uh, portable clack shack. All right guys, for the uh, portable clack shack, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've got me a little dead end uh, coupler right there. I've got my air assist underneath the table I got a little shelf down there where my battery backup sits and I've got it sitting on it. The switch is gonna get mounted right here. And as you can see, that, uh, that turns the, the air assist on. And I went ahead, I don't know that I'll ever use it, but I went ahead and put this little adjustable valve right here. So if I did wanna you know, change the amount of air pressure you can back this little nut right here off and it'll actually let you turn the pressure down on this thing. And uh, you can set it to, like you can turn it completely off right there, which I'm not gonna do because I don't wanna mess up this little pump. So I've got the little jam nut set to where I can't turn it all the way off. Uh, but if I did wanna adjust it up from that point, I can turn it this way and it'll come on up. But more than likely, I'm just going to leave that guy wide open for now. And if I don't need it, I can always adjust it from there. And in my original enclosure, I've just got a little quick coupler down there where it goes out the side of the enclosure. And of course, it runs around, comes up under the table, and ends up right there on the, uh, 
my newly engineered uh, regulator. So that's it for there. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for tonight. I got some more stuff that came in, uh, some blanks that I'll be taking with me on the booth for some just some random engravings on metal. And uh, I'll probably go over those later in the week. I've got to sit down and build me out a, uh, a jig to use with those. I want to have one jig that basically covers all the different pieces. Uh, I don't plan on at this event having multiple pieces to do. So I figure if I got a jig that I can do a dog tag or a pet tag or a pen or pencil or whatever on, then I'll just leave that one uh, jig up there. If I'm doing a cutting board or something like that, I can just lay it on top of the jig and engrave it there. So, but anyway, toward the end of the week, I'm gonna be doing a full on test run of the uh, portable clack shack. I'll be running it on generator and making sure everything works as it's supposed to. So uh, if it's something you're interested in, just uh, stay tuned and uh, be on the lookout. I'll be putting that out hopefully, uh, hopefully Thursday night because I've got to get this thing tested and make sure everything doesn't need any adjustments before Friday morning. So thanks for stopping by, guys. I hope this helps. Uh, I'll let you know how it works long term, but for now it appears that it's going to work pretty well and uh, save me from having to uh, worry about getting an extra air assist for now and even give me a little bit more of a sustainable air supply as I get more machines uh, in the shop here. So, but thanks for stopping by and have a good day.